So Peter, the loyalty and transaction marketplace. You've been doing a lot of work in this area. It's very exciting. We have a lot of our clients that are interested in it. You've just come out with an insight paper. Can you talk a little bit about what you found in that paper? Well, you know, we've been doing the development of local and the transition to digital for many, many years. This is one of the most exciting areas that we've had. It's an opportunity to have non-advertising dollars impacting the total integrated marketing. That's really just a buzzword until we suddenly start dealing with what are people buying? Uh, how can we track their behavior? How can we get more spend? And so these are all the tenants of marketing that we have previously attributed just to advertising. This is more important, potentially much larger. Well, and it appears from your paper that you've got some really large companies now that are moving into this space. What are you seeing there? You know, it's amazing. I mean, we're seeing some of the companies that have the big data. They track small businesses already. So we have everybody from American Express, Bank of America, really household names, you know, the big banks. We're also seeing companies like Gannett who are saying, hey, we're a media company. We have the synergies. We can drive leverage. And they're suddenly jumping in trying to compete too. And then we have the deals companies that are trying to take their merchant databases and their, and their consumer databases and they're saying, we want to get in too. So it's a free-for-all out there. I mean, there, there's hundreds of millions of dollars involved already in the investment. Well, you know, your comment in the paper that this could actually displace advertising in many different cases really hit home for me, having tracked advertising for many, many years. But it, this could be a game changer. Uh, it could be a game changer. I don't know if it's going to be entirely about displacing. I think in some cases it's going to supplement. Uh, it's sort of like what we saw with TV advertising and the web. Uh, you don't want to get rid of that brand awareness that you have with television advertising, and there's no reason to throw it all in the, in the kitchen sink. Right. Well, is there any nuggets that you would share at this point from your paper, a couple of things that we might take away? Well, we're talking a lot about big data. It's one of our major themes. Uh, the question is, how does it apply to small businesses? And that's what we're learning. Is some of this gold plating? something that maybe will be more mature in three or four years. Mm -hmm. This is what we're tracking as a company. Well, uh, can, a, can a small company survive in this environment? Oh, well, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, we hear things about, you know, can the independent pizza uh, company right. survive against pop, you know, Papa John's and Domino's? The fact is people already like their local pizza company. Uh, it's not a matter of taking the data and saying we know the answers. Oh, people, so this is the unique thing about local. People have habits. People know where it is. If you don't have a map to your local place, well, maybe you already know what it, where it is. You don't need to have a map. But uh, it certainly is a tremendous asset, uh, and it's a new welcome wagon, of course, for new consumers. Well, and as you say that, you know, the thing that strikes me is this national to local, which we're really focused on this year. You know, helping clients lead in local, you have to understand where that marketplace is, and we see a lot of dollars that are coming from national brand advertisers, and certainly in this kind of program, you would think it would even increase. You know, it's also part of the disintermediation between retailers and brands. So it used to see a lot of co-op dollars, and now the brands are going directly for consumers, and all these programs will actually help them do that.